Hey guys, welcome back to another video and this time I'm doing an updated tutorial of my moving platforms for Godot 4. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. As always, I already have a simple testing setup and to get started, we want to go ahead and add a new scene by clicking this plus icon. Here we are in a new scene as, and as the root node of this scene, we want to add a node 3D. And to do that, we can simply click on this 3D scene option here. And that by default adds a node 3D as the root node. Let's go ahead and rename it while we're at it to moving platform. And in my case, it's going to be moving platform too, since I already have a moving platform. So that should be good. And as a child of the moving platform, we want to add an animatable. If I can type animatable body 3d which is a new node they introduced in Godot 4 which will be perfect for our moving platform because as the description says it's a 3d physics body that can't be moved by external forces when moved manually it affects other bodies in its path which is like i said perfect for our moving platform and also in the inspector you will see that it has a sync to physics property which by default is turned on which is what we want it to be and as you can see here it's if it's set to true the body's movement will be synchronized to the physics frame. This is useful when animating movement via the animation player, which is exactly what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. We're not going to actually add any code to move our platform. We're going to be doing everything with an animation player. And like it says here, for example, on moving platforms, which is why, like I said, it's perfect for creating moving platforms. Anyway, we are getting a warning here, and that's because it wants a mesh and a collision shape. So let's go ahead and remove that warning by adding those things. So do control A and let's start by adding a mesh by doing a mesh instance 3D as a child of it. And then in the inspector for the mesh property, click on empty and we're going to use a box mesh, click on the mesh once more. And for the size, we're going to change it for the X to uh, four. The Y is going to be 0.2 and Z it's going to be 4. This works well for my test scene. Obviously, you want to tweak the values to fit your particular project. Now, let's go ahead and add the collision shape 3D and that will remove the warning. But we're now we're getting a warning for the collision shape because we actually need to define the shape. So in inspector, go to shape empty. And again, it's going to be a box shape. Click on box shape once more and we're going to make it match our mesh instance. So for the size, for the X, it's going to be 4. For the Y, it's going to be 0.2. And for the Z, it's going to be 4 as well. That should perfectly align with our mesh instance, which it looks like it is, which is perfect. And that pretty much does it for the platform itself. Now we need to create the path which our platform is going to move along. To do that, let's select our root node. To control A and we're going to add a path 3D node. Then as a child of the path 3D node, we want to make sure we add a path follow 3D node. And that's for the path itself. So before we do anything else, let's create the path and we have to select the path 3D node for that. And then you will notice that we have some options here that appear and we can create the path by selecting the add point option up here, which is the green icon. And then we pretty much can click anywhere on our scene to start adding points. Let's go ahead and do that. So you can see, as you saw, you just click anywhere and it will add the point. And you can edit the position of it by just selecting the point and then dragging anywhere. Now I'm going to make it align along the X axis. Uh, uh, as you see here, and I do have snapping on to do that. So just make sure that that point is perfectly aligned and then for our first point as well. Now you don't have to just add two points. You can add more than two points as you see here, and you can delete points by selecting the delete point option up here and then just clicking on the point. Or in this case, I'm just gonna do control Z to undo my previous actions. And yeah, this is the path where moving platform is gonna move along. So that's actually good. And like I said, you can always add more, edit it, move it around. And I'm doing, uh, control well not control I'm doing numpad 7 to do top view just to make it easier to uh, add my points anyway 
now a quick word from our sponsor Simba. If you want to start your game development journey with Godot 4, check out the Simba Academy. They offer many easy to follow courses that are ideal for people of all levels from beginners to intermediates. What sets Simba apart is how they make learning fun and practical through their professional video tutorials, written lessons, and interactive quizzes. Build up your skills by working on real projects building games of various genres ranging from open world, RPGs, and FPSs. Not only this, but Simba also in addition to all the Godot content offers courses covering various other topics like Python, Unity, Unreal, and many other tools. With one subscription including a 7 day trial, you can unlock over 250 courses and 32 learning pathways. Thanks to Simba, you can get a special discount using the link in the description or pinned comment to get an extra 20% off your first year of your annual subscription on top of any ongoing discounts. Uh, this special offer is certainly valid for the first 50 subscribers, so if you're ready to dive into Godot 4, then definitely go check out Simba today to start your game dev journey. The last thing we need to actually get the platform to move along this path is with the path follow 3D node, we want to add a remote transform 3D node. This is going to be the node responsible for making our platform follow the path. And to do that, we want to set well, we want to assign our animatable body to the remote path property for of this node. So on the inspector, click on the assign and then select our animatable body 3D. And if we go ahead and select our path follow 3D node, you will see that in the inspector we have a progress property and a progress ratio property. And if we change any of these values, you will see that our platform moves like shown here. Now we're going to actually be using the progress ratio with our animation player to animate the platform since it's just easier because it's a value between 0 and 1 which just makes things very easy for us. So the last step now is to add that animation player to animate the platform. Like I said we're not going to actually use any code and we're going to keep things very simple with the use of the animation player. So let's go ahead and add it with our new root node selected. That's Go ahead and search for it here and add it. Animation player, there we go. Click on the animation, new, and then just name it to whatever you want. In this case, I'm just gonna call it move. Then I'm gonna change the duration to four. And then go to zero in the timeline, select our path follow 3D node and the inspector. Like I said, we're gonna use the progress ratio. So on zero for the progress ratio, click the keyframe. This little menu is going to come up. Just simply create. Just simply click on the create button. That will add our keyframe, our first keyframe to our timeline. Then we want to go over to the middle of the timeline and then change the progress ratio to one. And then click the key icon again to add our other keyframe that we need. And that's pretty much all you need for this animation. So if we play it. Our platform does move to the end of the path at the you know at second two and the reason we have it in the middle of our timeline and not at four is because we most likely want it to loop so we can create well we can cause our animation to loop by turning this animation looping option on and now if we play you will see that it's actually looping and our platform is moving back and forth and also we most likely want it to auto play by default so click on the auto play option to turn it on and that's pretty much our platform fully set up that's all you need to create a platform in Godot it's super simple and easy and let's actually test it out but first thing we want to make sure that we actually save it so save it anywhere you want and like I said, let's go ahead and test it out now. In this case, I'm going to my main test scene here and then I'm going to add it under this normal node that I renamed to moving platforms, which is, I'm just using for grouping purposes, basically. And I'm going to do control shift A to add that platform that we just created. So moving platform two. let's go over to top view and let's move it down. Let's see. Okay, cool. That looks fine. And then we can just go ahead and test it out. Well, hopefully <laughs> it might be too high for me to jump on it. Yeah, it's too high for me to jump on it. So let's move it down a little bit so our player can actually reach it. All right, we should be good this time. So let's jump on it. 
And perfect. It's actually working as intended. So that's actually all you need. So if you found the video helpful, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful day.